The events you're about to see and hear are true. Real cops, real cases, real criminals. Stories told by the cops who lived them and will remember them for the rest of their lives. Top Cops. To most people, a police canine is merely a well-trained dog. But those of us who work with these magnificent animals know they can do many things that a human officer can't, and that they are capable of acts that can only be described as courageous. In a police dog, we call courage drive. But whether an act of courage is performed by an officer with two legs or four, it deserves the same respect. <laughs> the canine section of the Albuquerque Police Department is located in the main police station, but the dogs stay with their handlers 24 hours a day, constantly honing their skills and becoming closer as partners. Okay, Arco. Ready, boy. Albuquerque Police Department, come out now or a dog will be sent in to find you. This is your last warning. Come out now. All our dogs are from Europe, having been initially trained in Germany or Holland. Some dogs specialize in tracking or control aggression. Some smell narcotics. Arco's specialty was searching. Go on! Get away from me, you shit! That's daddy's boy. That's the way. <laughs> Man, isn't he something? You ever seen a dog that much in control? Yeah, he's something all right. I still think my Marco can take him on the obstacle course, but... <laughs> oh, yeah, dream on, Mesmer. <laughs> this guy's the best. The best! I couldn't know it at the time, but Arco's skills would soon bring him face to face with the gravest danger of his career. Hey, Gilbert! Come on, man, wake up! On the afternoon of January 12th, 1993, Vernon Flagler dropped by to see some of his friends. Vernon, <laughs> what the hell are you doing here? Waking you up, man. Come on, time to fly, dude. What are you on, man? <laughs> Our streams in grass. It's what you call natural high. <laughs> <laughs> what the hell you want? OK, I need you to borrow Rodney's car, OK? Because I got some pressing business. I gotta beat up this guy who owes me some money. I don't know. Come on, man. Get the car and let's go, okay? If we get there fast, I'll let you watch me jump this guy. And <laughs> hi. The three young men picked up Vernon Flagler's brother, Warren, and set out on their mission. Rodney. So I think you should just give me all your money. Come on! Come on! Thank you. <laughs> the ice cream parlor employee gave Flagler the $75 in a kill, but followed him when he left the store. She saw him get into the Mustang and got the license number. She then called 911. PD all units, 273-9917 San Pedro. White male, 2060-150. Plaid shirt, pink t-shirt. Last seen northbound Cagua at Marvel. Vehicle is beige Mustang. Mexico tag, 111 CK1. Officer Kevin Hoffman was the first to spot the car. 82, I need cover officers now. Suspect vehicle is gassing up at Jerry's service station, corner of San Mateo and Indian School. Keep your hands on your head. 
strapped to the trucks in here. Line face down on the ground. Do it. The four suspects were handcuffed and held while assisting APD officers brought the ice cream parlor employee to ID the perpetrator, which she did. The stolen money, Flagler's automatic, and a second gun he had in his possession were found in the car, along with quantities of marijuana, methamphetamines, and magic mushrooms. That should have been the end of the story, but this story was just beginning. Robbery detective Douglas Sean met the suspects in Albuquerque's main station and placed them in adjoining interview rooms to take their statements. Flagler claimed he knew nothing about the guns, drugs, or a robbery, and that he and friends had just been out cruising. Where'd you get the money you were carrying, Vernon? Babysit. I babysit for friends. What friends? Where do they live? I don't know. Uh, but I can find the place. You do any drugs, Vernon? I have. I, I mean, I have had a history of doing drugs, uh, but I, I don't anymore. Oh, how come? Well, it, it deters my motivation. You know, it, it makes me lazy. <laughs> makes you lazy? Yeah. See, I was, I was planning on getting into high finance. You know, start at the top of the mountain. Vernon. Do you understand that with all the evidence we found, your, your story just isn't very believable? Yeah. Are you going to stick to that story? Yes, sir. So even though we've lifted your prints off the gun, you've been identified, and the stolen money is in your pocket, nothing that you have told me is a lie. What did he tell you? That he hasn't done anything wrong. What are the others telling you? Basically, that they said he was going to beat up somebody, the drugs are his, and that they didn't know he had a gun until he came back to the car. Well, they've all got records. Let's get the DA in and have another go around. What's your problem? What's going on in here? Ah, ah, they, they were hurting my shoulders. So I just, I just moved them in front of me. Well, just stop struggling with him. Well, just sit there and be quiet. You check the others. I'll go call the DA. What neither of the officers could have known was that Flagler was double-jointed. By this time of night, the doors were locked and everyone in the offices had gone home. Because they were interviewing prisoners, Sean and Sanchez had also placed their weapons in the gun locker. They knew they were going to need some help. Go get the dog. You cut the power. Our 
Marco and I were the team on call, so we headed upstairs with John and canine officers Tom Garduño and Jeff Woods. Other officers also arrived to secure the floor. Here, you need a little help there, Doug. Hi, Andy. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, well, I know how it is. You know, you get to be detective, you start to get soft. <laughs> Time you got back to some real police work. Well, why don't you and your partner here show me how it's done, huh? Okay. Take it from here. When I work with Arco, I watch the dog and my partners cover me. Albuquerque Police Department, come out now or a dog will be sent in to find you. This is your last warning. Come out now. The lab was so huge, Arco would not have picked up Flagler's scent unless he was in the immediate area. could do was wait until he gave us a signal that he found something. I knew that if Flagler was in the lab, Arco would find him. I also knew that he would clear the whole area before coming back and letting me know he couldn't find anyone. But after several minutes passed, I got concerned. This was taking too long. It wasn't like Arco. John, something's up here. Maybe he's still looking. Something's happened. We would have heard it, Andy. No. We got a problem here. Marco, come here. Gonna be okay. John, seal it off. Call a 1076. Doug, we have a barricaded subject. We need spot. Arco looked like something out of the Friday the 13th movie. Every emotion went through my mind. It was like seeing your best friend get stabbed. As I rushed Arco down to the first floor, another canine officer, Eugene Pettit, was on his way up. What up? Gene, I need a ride to the vet. Let's go. The only thing I could think of was getting him help. Just hang on. We're getting you to the van. Buddy, come on. You're gonna be okay. You're gonna be okay. And great deals. And now, save big on selected Yokohama, Guardsman, and all Goodyear tires. But hurry, this big sale ends Saturday. Sears Auto Center.